In section 1.5, we will discuss the Dirac delta function and then under section 1.5.1, we will discuss the divergence of 1 over r square in r unit vector. The very first thing that I will discuss here, uh, the Dirac delta function. It's not a function because it is not completing all the requirement of being a function because its value at x equal to at x its value is equal to zero and that's the reason that it is a, a kind of generalized uh, type of sequence or a function but not exactly it cannot be exactly termed as a function so for uh, why this thing comes into electrodynamics and why this thing comes in uh, physics, uh, the use of this function, it is basically uh, a tool with the help of which we can deal with the singularity of a function. For example, if a function is having a singularity at a point and we want to remove that singularity from that function we just couple that function with this one because the value of this function under the integration is 1 so when it is combined with a function and we know that multiplication of a function or any other value if we do multiply that with 1 then that value is not the actual value is not affected so it's a function we uh, if we are having a function and we are integrating that function we are finding the area under the curve for that function and that function is having some singularity then we will not be able to just calculate that integral at that specific point we will accompany that function with the Dirac delta function and the Dirac delta function will give value at that point and then the function means the actual value of the function will not change because it is just multiplication by one like it is just like uh, for example I am walking on this floor and one of the tile is missing here so if I will uh, put my step over there then I will go down means it's a kind of singularity in a function but if I put something over it and I go then I will not feel that missing tile and that's the role of the Dirac delta function in uh, this calculation Let me consider the divergence theorem which is divergence on a volume and divergence of a physical quantity v or a function divergence of v in a volume d tau is equal to a closed surface integral and v dot d a. This is the a divergence theorem which we have already covered now if my function is v equals 1 over r square r unit vector and i find its divergence now as i am doing the calculation in spherical polar coordinates of this is the divergence expression in the spherical polar coordinates the radial component is 1 over r square curly over curly r in r squared this is the radial component i will not write rest of the component for theta and phi because our function is only radial dependence so i can write that the volume integral here and divergence of v so for divergence i can write 1 over r square curly over curly r and then r squared and then I will write the function which is 1 over r squared. The r unit vector here will just go with the r unit vector here. It's a dot product. So I can write this one. It is d tau here 
Now this thing is equal to R square is cancelling with the R. So I can cancel this one with this and curly over curly R of a constant will be zero and this integral come out to be zero. This is the right hand, this is the left hand side calculation of the divergence theorem. Now let me take the right side of this equation. So the right hand side is then equal to integral on a surface and v dot d a. Now function v is, this is a closed surface integral and function v is 1 over r square r unit vector dot dA. So I will write the length element and the length element I know that it is r square sine of theta d theta and d phi. We have calculated this area element already and then this is in the radial uh, unit vector means in the radial direction and this is equal to this is r square now is we don't have any integration on r so I can write this one is capital R square as well r unit vector dot r unit vector will become 1 and we will have a surface integral and then this is 1 over r square and this I can write is a small r because we don't have integration on this one. So this will be r square and sine theta, d theta and d phi. Now look here that r square is cancelling with r square and we are left only with the solid angle here on a closed surface. And this thing we know already that this is equal to 4 pi. So the right hand side give us that this side of the theorem is 4 pi while this side gave us that it is equal to 0. So we know that 0 is not equal to 4 pi. So it means that either the divergence theorem is wrong or there is something wrong with our function and the divergence theorem is not wrong because this function that we are dealing is having some problem. If I consider this function then this function is diverging but what about its divergence at 0, r equal to 0 and when I consider uh, about this function v equal 1 over r square in r unit vector then this function itself diverges when r goes to 0 and that's the reason that this function is having singularity means the function itself blows up when it reaches the origin it means that we will not be able to find its divergence at origin and that's the reason that such functions which are having their own problem then we will not be able to find their divergence at specific points where they are having a problem, where they are having a singularity or where they are diverging themselves. Now we will have to uh, correct this situation and in order to correct this situation we will use the Dirac delta function. And let me start with the first 1.5.2 section in order to introduce the one dimensional Dirac delta function. So this is 1.5.2. This is the one dimensional and Dirac, Dirac delta function.
we will first consider this in one dimension and then we will convert this into three dimensions with the help of this thing. So what is a Dirac delta function? A Dirac delta function is defined is that we are having a function delta of x. This delta of x is such that this is equal to 0 if x is not equal to 0 and this is undefined. It blows when x is equal to 0. Means this function is blowing when it is reaching the origin just like this situation as r goes to 0 the function blows so I am defining such a function delta of x and I can write this one is uh, let have this is our axis and we have our x-axis is it is one dimensional so this is our x-axis and this is our delta of x here. Now the function is such that I will have to exaggerate this thing a little bit because if I just move a line here and then back here then uh, you will not understand this thing so I will exaggerate it a little bit and let's say we are having a situation something like this. This is a function and now this is a delta function. When x goes to 0, when x goes to 0, then our delta of x goes to infinity means it blows it goes too high however if i find the area under the curve like the area which is under this curve now this is so thin this is so highly peaked function that if i do integrate this area then this area will be equal to 1 means the area under the curve will be equal to 1. So I can write that the integral and it is on all space from minus infinity on this side to plus infinity on this side means it is all the one dimensional line and delta of x and dx then if I integrate on the differential x here, then the area will come out to be 1. So it's such a function. It is a very high peak function. It is a unique value function and it gives value only at x equal to 0 while having 0 value at x not equal to 0. And this we will uh, let's let me write this in another way as well means it is not to be exactly on origin always it can be like this as well that we are having x-axis this is x-axis and this is the delta of x and we are having our origin here and let's say at any other point let's say at this point which is a along x-axis we are having this function delta of x here and here like this 